All right, welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. And we're going to switch it up a little bit tonight. I've got the news and Toss has the nonsense. How you doing, Total List, today? My name is Toss. Oh, I promise I wouldn't, I wouldn't rap, would I? I'm doing fine, Spatry. How are you? <laughs> yeah, you ruined the show last night by rapping, so please, no rap tonight. <laughs> well, talking in the post-show comments. Uh, half of the commenting was singing, folks. Give me a break, but yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's the thing. All of you listening out there, you got to join us for the post-show conversations because we do cover a lot of stuff that we really can't cover on the shows themselves and that sort of thing. A lot of stuff in the news this week. Microsoft Office comes to Android. Linus Torvald's dream has been realized. Linus Torvald once said that if Microsoft ever made applications for Linux, quote, it means I've won. Now that Microsoft has released a version of Office for Android, Terval's dream has come true. Well, sort of. It's likely that Terval's envisioned Microsoft Office on a desktop build of Linux, but that's not exactly what has transpired. First, Linux in this case is Android, which of course is built on Linux, and it's been heavily Googleized. Second, it isn't a full version of Office by any means. Instead, it's more of a front end for users with an Office 365 subscription, a companion application. What do you think about that, Toss? Let me just say that Microsoft needs some marketing help, uh, especially with Windows 8. And if Android can help them market, you know, something could be more successful, why not? Microsoft is still in the news. Microsoft uh is forced to rebrand SkyDrive. Microsoft's General Counsel and Executive Vice President Legal and Corporate Affairs, Brad Smith, may brag about every time the company signs some bogus deal with Android players over bogus patents. He is apparently not guiding the company towards doing good homework before naming a product. Uh, a UK court recently found Microsoft SkyDrive brand infringing upon the trademark of UK's Sky Broadcasting Group. Windows Maker agreed to change the name of its cloud services globally. The two companies have now reached a settlement where Microsoft will be allowed to use the name for a limited time so that it can ensure a smooth transition to some new brand. Oh, boy, folks, I should have known. It's the Microsoft Bashing Show starring Spatry, but... <laughs> okay, NSA and uh, all kinds of stuff in the news here uh, regarding that. Uh, NSA Keyscore program stores almost every form of digital communication, including emails and Facebook chats. NSA may not be able to sort and search emails of its own employees, according to NSA Freedom of Information Act officer Cindy Blacker. But they set up systems which give them access to anyone's digital lives, including the content of their emails. So if you're sending very private information about your daughter's illness to your doctor, some NSA employee or contractor can be prying on it. And none of this is anonymous. As you can see from the image below, okay, well, you can't see the image below, but I can see it. Um, uh, the NSA program called X Key Score gains complete access to anyone's communication. And speaking of prying, uh, it appears that half of a Tor uh, websites have been or Tor sites have been compromised. Now, for those of you who don't know what Tor is, and somebody correct me on IRC if I'm wrong here, but I believe Tor is a method for people to uh, transmit information uh, securely and privately. Well, it appears that the FBI uh, uh, or the, fo the founder of the Freedom of Hosting has been arrested in Ireland and is waiting extradition to the USA in a crackdown, the FBI claims. Uh, to be about hunting down pedophiles. Half of the uh, Onion sites in the Tor network have been compromised, including the email counterpart for Tor uh, Deep Web, Tor Mail, 
The FBI also embedded a zero-day JavaScript attack against Firefox 17 on Freedom Hosting Server. It appears to install a tracking cookie and a payload that phones home to the FBI when the victim resumes non-Tor browsing. Interesting implications for the Tor Silk Road and the value of Bitcoin stemming from this. The attack relies on two extremely unsafe practices when using Tor-enabled JavaScript and using the same browser for Tor and non-Tor browser. So, let's face it. If they want to get you, they're going to get you. Uh, maybe we should rename the Internet the SpyNet. Um, let me just say that, uh, Spatry and folks out there, if you want something to um, be private and stay private, stay away from your computer and a smartphone. How does that sound? All right, now we've got some Apple bashing in the news. The United States Patent Office invalidates Apple's pinch to zoom patent. Apple is now reaching out to United States President Barack Obama as its devices face import ban in the United States from August 4th. It's the same Apple, which sued almost every other Android player, which posted any challenge to Apple's market dominance. Apple used patents such as rounded corners and pinch to zoom to get the entire family of Samsung devices uh, to get banned in the United States, Europe, Australia, and where not. Uh, after initial victories, Apple has started to lose. Uh, the tides have turned. Apple is losing battle after battle, and patents alter patents. Let's face it, folks. The patent system is broken, and we are now seeing the birth signs of this. The Goliath has fallen, maybe? Absolutely. And finally, in this week's news, the first Firefox OS phones go on sale in South America. South American Telefonica has announced two Firefox OS-powered devices going on sale in Colombia and Venezuela. Alcatel One Touch Fire and ZTE Open are now available through a movie star stores and sales channels. Firefox OS-based devices will be launched in Brazil in the fourth quarter. Firefox OS powers the first smartphones built entirely on web technologies and will stimulate an inspiring new wave of uh, innovation for the web, says Jay Sullivan, a Mozilla Chief Operating Officer. We're proud to work with partners like Telefonica to see what the potential to deliver an experience for first-time smartphone users, which will delight them and really put the power of the web in everyone's hands. Good job. For all the lucky, for all the lucky folks in Spain, Spatry, I think on the Firefox phone, if you sign it to your contract, I, I think you get a one a one year free supply worth of sangria. <laughs> Here it comes, folks! It's time for the nonsense report. Take it away, toss today. All right, let's start off with a feel good story. This, this, this is this is nice. Um, <laughs> Ten-year-old boy, Spatry, saves the day. He was in his grandmother's car. His grandmother, I guess, had a mild stroke. She passes out as the car is hurtling down the highway at 60 miles an hour with the kid's younger brother. This ten-year-old, I think his name is Griffin, realized what was going on. He takes control of the car. He takes control of the steering wheel and steers it into a mud ditch. Nobody heard, saves the day. Of course, now the police are saying, how did you do this? He learned this, Spatry, by playing Super Mario Kart. How cool is that? That is something interesting, you know, and, and the thing is, you know, a lot of these gaming consoles have the little steering wheels and that sort of thing on it, so kudos to the little kid. Yeah, good news, definitely. Totally agree. Young man, uh, whoever you are, good job. All right, some nonsense. Uh, Spatry, apparently uh, Russia is having a problem with people stealing their entire roads. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me uh, take some of this asphalt home and uh, make a uh, planter bed out of it, yeah. Uh, well, this gets funnier and funnier. A, 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 a 40-year-old Russian man uh, stole a one-mile stretch of road uh, between the villages of Parcheg, Wachigda River, I'm, I'm probably saying this wrong, sorry, Parcheg and Wachigda River, he, st he stole 82 reinforced concrete slabs that linked these two, these two villages, and he got caught. Uh, but that, 
that is not the most embarrassing part, Spatchy. Now, look, if you stole a mile of road in Florida, how much How much do you think that would cost? How much do you think that would cost the state? Uh, probably a few million. <laughs> the total bill? How could I keep a straight? The total bill, Spatchy, $6,095. That's it. <laughs> what? What? And did they even find out what the guy was stealing the road for? Uh, I guess he was trying to sell it, or you know, steal it like it reads, sell it, sell parts of it. Uh, well, it didn't work out because apparently this was a road to nowhere. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, six thousand dollars here would cover just like you know, spray paint for the signs, you know. But that's all it was, six thousand dollars. Imagine that. All right, what else you got? Well, this has the potential to be uh, really nonsensical, Spatch. I guess YouTube in the coming weeks will open up its live streaming service to channels who have a, a few, as few as 100 sub subscribers. That sounds cool, but I have a vision of, you know, Spatchery wannabes and Total OS Today wannabes uh, taking advantage of this, doing live streaming not being prepared, you know, maybe taking a break as they're streaming. And I have a vision of, you know, birds flying through the camera or their pet dog chewing on the screen, you know, and like, you know, who else will happen on screen? But I don't know if you heard this, but YouTube will open live streaming to channels who have as few as 100 subscribers. What do you think of that? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I think that all of the features that are available to YouTube partners and everybody uh, pretty much should be available to everyone. This is an open format where we can share our views, our opinions. You know, we can uh, put up videos to educate, entertain, and inspire people. And I think the I think it's a wonderful idea. You know, because there are some people with less than a hundred subscribers out there that are putting out some pretty good content. And then, of course, they will eventually build up into something more than just a hundred subscribers. I mean, there was a time when I had less than 100 subscribers, but I quickly started to build a following myself. So, yes, I think this is a magnificent idea. I, you know, I think that these should be available to people who want to put them to good use. And obviously the people that don't put them to not so good use, I mean, they're not going to build much of an audience. But the people that have something to offer to people, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I think this, I think it's a magnificent idea. Absolutely. All right, cool. Next up, well, I don't know why, Spatry, but smartwatches are once again uh oh here it comes <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, we, we've talked we made we talked about this and made fun about this you know in the past but it's a freaking watch i guess a company called pebble started selling watches two weeks ago sony is coming out with one i guess google microsoft samsung and to all the newbies out there who are interested in buying a smartphone even if you don't buy a smartphone folks it tells the time. In case you didn't know, a today's cell phone can tell the time. You don't. Absolutely. I, you know, look, if you wanted to, you know, get something Dick Tracy and be cool and something different, fine. But I, I guess it links to your phone with, you know, Bluetooth and it alerts you and this and that. But look, unless can unless the watch can do far more than tell the time, Spatry, I don't think you and I will be buying one. I don't think so either, unless, of course, it has the one that measures the special. Never mind, I won't go there. Well, I will. Uh, the next... Uh... <laughs> All right. This one I caught off of the uh, National Public Radio one, one morning. All right. Apparently, the London emergency, or the, sorry, the... <laughs> how could I keep a straight face? The London Fire Brig Brigade. Over the last three years, there's been an increase of emergency calls... With people, I guess couples, uh, having problems with um, handcuffs, toasters, uh, vacuum cleaner, and God knows what else rings. And the fire chief or, or the head of the fire department attributes this, attributes this Spatry, to the uh, family book, not the family book, but the uh, adult book, The Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, there's been a spike, uh, 79 incidents involving uh, handcuffs, and a total of 1,300 uh, calls of people, quote, getting stuck in stuff. Now, I, I have not 
read the book. But my first thought was, uh, wait a minute, you're, you're getting stuck with the vacuum cleaner or with, and the toaster. I'm thinking, no, no, it, it, it has to be a blender. You, you're doing it all wrong, folks. But but here here's the thing, Spatry. If couples are doing this for their lives, uh, let me just give a piece of advice for all the guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> The ladies, I don't know how many females are in the audience, but if I have it wrong, please tell me. But this is my advice for the guys. And forget the 50 shades of nonsense and all this stuff. Number one advice, when your woman wants to go shopping, go with her. Say, yes, dear, I would love to. And when she tries on, say, a pair of shoes and she asks you how do they look and you say fine or looks good, not good enough. You have to put some enthusiasm behind it and say, Hey, honey, oh, those red shoes look, oh, they're terrific. Put some oomph into it. And the number two. But, Toss, what does this have to do with the. Spatry has fainted. I have a nasty feeling that uh, <laughs> that this won't uh, fit within the show content there. <laughs> well, it is nonsensical in a way, but I, w- I was just giving some advice here at the end. I mean, for people to call the police or call the fire brigade and the fire based on the book on a novel i mean how nonsensical can you get yeah <laughs> okay that's, what it comes down to. <laughs> that's like well i guess the second piece of advice was you know you know when, when you have a conversation with your lady shut up and listen and that's all i have to say there you go and uh say toss do you know what the difference between kinky and weird is this this book <laughs> what kinky is when you tickle your wife with a feather weird is when you use the whole chicken black black <sighs> and you're talking about my <laughs> take us out toss thank you everybody for listening in on another terrific sinner report uh i don't know is this 30 31 and fish i lost track i have to go back and look thank you for all the listeners who uh tune in uh, every week and in the past thank you to everybody here at the linux distro community thank you spatry for you know being my partner for all these shows they're a lot of fun to do and to everybody out there we will catch all of you sometime next week bye bye ciao